In this video we are going to do a basic review of what we've learned about electricity and we're also going to learn how to do resistor color codes and use a digital multimeter to evaluate um, different comp electrical components. First of all, a little bit of review. Remember the Bohr atom is um, useful for vis visualizing uh, things at an atomic level. Um, you have the nucleus um, that's positively charged because it has the protons that are positively charged and neutrons that are neutral. There are electrons circling around it. They are negatively charged and in shells, different shells. The atomic number is the number of protons in the nucleus and that also determines if your element is stable it will have the same number of um, negative electrons equal to the protons. The valence shell, remember, is what's really important for us in um, studying electricity. The outer shell is called the valence shell. So your electrons fill up if they have, for copper for instance, has 29 protons, so it has 29 electrons, and they fill up with two in the first shell and then eight, and then they f keep filling until they have just one left in this outside shell, which is the valence shell. Remember that how many electrons are in the valence shell determines whether something is a conductor, an insulator, or a semiconductor. To be a conductor, which means that um, it is good at electron flow for creating electricity, you would have less than four electrons in that valence shell. To be an insulator, you would have more than four electrons in that valence shell, which means that it is not receptive to the flow of electrons, and so it is not conducive to the flow of electricity. If you have exactly four in the valence shell, then it's a semiconductor. So here we see the um, neutral atom, Si, which is silicone. And so is silicone a conductor, an insulator, or a semiconductor? So in order to figure that out, we're going to look here in the valence shell and see that there's four. So your answer is semiconductor, because there's exactly four. So we talked about electricity. There are three things that we talk about in Ohm's Law. There's um, voltage, current, and resistance. And kind of a little bit more background on what we mean when we say voltage. It's the force required to move a charge in the electric field. So when force is applied over a distance, when these charges move a distance, remember opposite po charges attract, so they're moving towards each other. Uh, the force, voltage puts a force to it and moves it, then we have work that's done. Work done in moving a charge against the electric fields leads to voltage. So voltage is the work per charge done against the electric field. So ideally, a voltage source can provide a constant voltage for any current, and here's what your graph would look like, a constant voltage. No matter what the current, we can have this voltage. Um, but in practice, ideal sources really don't exist, but we can approximate them pretty closely using actual voltage sources, such as batteries and generators. Current, represented with the letter I, is the amount of charge, and it's important to note that when we talk about charge, we use the letter Q, um, that flows past a point in a unit of time. So again, we want one amp, we would talked about this in a previous um, video. One amp is the number of electrons having a total charge of one coulomb moving through a cross-section. And remember a coulomb is 6.24 times 10 to the uh, 24, so billion billion electrons passing through a section in one second. That's what current represents. So if the current is 2 coulombs passing through a point in 5 seconds, how would we, um, what would the current be if 2 coulombs are passing through a point in 5 seconds? So if I use this formula up here, I can take 2 coulombs and put it in for Q because that represents charge. We have 2 coulombs of charge. Passing in 5 seconds, put 5 in for time. So if I do 2 divided by 5, I get 0.4 amps. So 4 tenths of an amp is 2 coulombs passing a point in 5 seconds. 
So now we want to talk about resistance. Resistance is the opposition to current. So if we have all of this current flowing through our circuit, as you noticed in the simulations, if you have too much current, it can set your circuit on fire. And so we don't want to have that. We often have to insert some resistance into our circuit so that we can back down the amount of current that we have so that we don't overpower the circuit. So 1 ohm, and this is the symbol for ohm, is the resistance if one amp is in a material when one volt is applied. So one ohm of resistance backs down your current so that you only have one amp of a current for one volt. Conductance is the reciprocal of resistance, and here's a formula for it. You will talk more about this. You'll learn more about conductance if you take digital electronics um, over at the academy or in your future studies. So we're not going to get too much into conductance in POE, but if you take digital electronics, you'll learn more about it then. This is an example of a resistor. It has a little uh, section here, and then you have the lead wires going in and out. There is an insulation material around it, and then because you do have the current entering your resistor, we do need to have it insulated. And then the color bands show how much resistance this is used because these are really tiny parts. The color bands are used to show how much resistance each one shows. And so that's what we're going to learn next is how to read those colors so that we know how much resistance we have. This last band, these first three bands show the, oh, the first two bands show for digits. This is called your multiplier band. You might multiply by a hundred. So if you have 1800 ohms of resistance, we could multiply by thousands. So you could have 18,000 ohms of resistance, which would be called 18 kilo ohms. And so we're going to learn next how to do that, how to read those color bands. Here is an example of what the colors mean. Black is zero when we're talking about digits. Brown is one. Red is two. And you can look on down this chart and see what I'm talking about. In the R drive, there is a sheet that gives all of this information. So you can write this down in your, pause the video and write this down in your notebook right now. But there's also a reference sheet located in the R drive that you can look at. Also, these colors are also used in the third band as a multiplier. So you will see a red band as the third band if we want to multiply by 100. You'll see a brown band as the third band if we want to multiply by 10. You'll see an orange band as the third band if we want to multiply by 1,000. So we're going to get these digits, like 1 and 5 would be 15 for your first two colors. And then if we wanted 1,000, the third color would be orange. Sometimes you might have, and this is for a four band resistor, sometimes you have a five band resistor and that just means you have three digits before you have a multiplier. Your last band will always be gold or silver and this refers to the tolerance. Our resistors are rated within a certain amount so that you know that you're, if it says it's an 82 kilo ohm resistor, you're going to be within 82 kilo ohms Ba within 5% or 10% based on whether you have a gold band or a silver band for your tolerance. If there's no band, it's within 20%. Okay, so let's take a look at some. So what's the resistance and tolerance of each of the four band resistors? So I'm looking back at this, I see green, brown, red. So when I look back at my example, Green is 5, brown is 1, so 5, 1, and red is a multiplier of 100, so 5,100 ohms. So let's see if we're right. Notice that they don't write 5,100, they write 5.1 and then they have a K. This stands for kilo ohms, which means they've divided it by 1,000. So 5.1 kilo ohms, and then our tolerance, because the band is gold, this last band is gold, it's going to measure within 5.1 kilo ohms every time, within 5%. So I can figure out what 5% of 5.1 is and subtract it to get my lower limit and add it to get my upper limit and I know that I sh this resistor should measure within that range every single time. So let's try another. We have gray, red, yellow. So when I look at my 
reference chart, gray is 8, red is 2, and then my multiplier is yellow, which is 4. So I have 82,000 or 82, um, 100,000 because I'm going to add four zeros to my 82. And then my tolerance is going to be plus or minus 10%. Notice this doesn't say 820,000, it says 820 kilo ohms because again I'm dividing by a thousand to get kilo ohms. Next resistor, I have yellow, which is four, purple, which is seven, and black is my multiplier, so I have 47 here, and then my multiplier, black, tells me that it's 10 to the first. So this is just 87 ohms of resistance, and I have a plus or minus 10% uh, here, Uh, this one actually has a mistake on my slide. This shit says plus or minus 5%. This really should be plus or minus 10% because it's silver. So let's check this one out. This one's correct. 47, we're going to multiply by 1, so it stays 47. So this is 47 ohms of resistance with 10% tolerance. Next, we have brown, black, gold. So brown is a digit of 1. Black is a digit of 0, so this is 10. My multiplier is um, gold, so gold, oh, I think that's supposed to be orange. My multiplier is orange, so that's going to be um, times 10 to the third, so that's 1,000. So I have 1, 0, 1,000, so I have 10,000, and my tolerance is going to be plus or fi minus 5%. So one kilo ohm one kilo ohm or yeah and I think this is wrong too. This is one kilo ohm, ten kilo ohms, because this is one zero and then times a thousand. Sorry about that. Sometimes they're not labeled with color bands. Sometimes your resistors will be these little flat pieces of metal, and you'll notice this if you'll open up a computer and you see a circuit board. You'll see these little flat, flat pieces of metal, and they'll tell you your resistor value. Those are little resistors, and the resistor values will be printed on the little flat pieces. This is your first digit this is your second digit, and then this is your multiplier. And we're not going to talk too much about this. Again, you'll learn more about this type of resistor coding in digital electronics. Now, the next part of our session, it talks about meters. How can we measure resistance in the re um, resistor to make sure that it is what it says it is? Or how can we measure voltage in our batteries to make sure they're providing the volts that they say they provide. This is an example of an analog meter where the dial changes as you test whatever you're looking for and you have to actually read and choose the range and the proper scale. We're not going to use analog meters but I just wanted to show you what one looked like. This is what we'll be using, something similar to this, only ours will have either a yellow casing or some of you may have a green casing. This is a digital multimeter, and it's going to have a digital display up here. We will still have to do some choosing of our own, the um, sections that we want. We will um, turn to V when we want to measure volts, and we will turn to the ohm symbol up here. There's a little ohm symbol when we want to measure resistance. And then we will have to choose which range we want to use as we measure, but this is what you're going to be using for your um, digital multimeter. Now that you've seen this video, practice. Um, you're going to practice reading resistor color codes, and you're going to practice using a digital multimeter. Uh, meter, sorry, said meteor. Um, a digital multimeter. That's in another video that's um, t in your R drive, and it's titled "How to Use a Multimeter and Read Resistor Color Codes." Thank you.